Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Board Game Breakfast, my monthly live Q&A right here on the Dice Tower. Uh, my name is Crystal Pisano, and uh, you may know me from Dice Tower Tonight, a show that I host right here on the Dice Tower with Eric Summerer every two weeks on Wednesday evenings. Um, in fact, we have an episode of that coming up this Wednesday, although that episode is going to be a little bit different than our usuals because it is the day before Thanksgiving and I have a flight to catch that night. <laughs> so we're going to start the stream earlier than usual and end it earlier than usual also. Like, it's going to be shorter. I, that, I could have said that a little bit more succinctly. How are you all doing this morning? Uh, please let me know in the chat if my audio is okay. I know that my video is a little bit fuzzy when I stream via this method. Um, so I apologize for the video quality, but unfortunately with the way YouTube has changed the way live streaming works, this is my only option currently. My webcam is 1080p. It records in great quality, but for some reason when I go through my streaming software and then put that into YouTube, it doesn't work the way it should. So apologies for the fuzziness. Luckily, you don't have to be able to see me clearly to talk to me. So we're here for the Q&A. And if you all have any questions for me, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I'm hoping that the chat here in my streaming software is working because I can't see anything. So either the stream hasn't caught up yet or no one is chatting, which I just want to know if you all can hear me. <laughs> oh, yay. Okay, somebody said that they can hear me. Perfect. Um, Thank you, Gary, for letting me know, because that would be silly if I was sitting here talking to my webcam and no one could hear me. That wouldn't work out so well. Um, so it's almost the end of November, which I can't even believe. It's like December is my favorite month of the year. So I, oh, the video quality looks good. Okay, well, maybe it's working better this time. I don't know. Last time somebody said it was pretty blurry. Um, when I did it through this method and I haven't really changed much since last month. So perfect. Awesome. You all are saying it looks good. Then that is good to know. Um, uh, good evening, David over in the UK. Uh, I love doing this video at a time where I can get people from more parts of the world. Uh, Clarkston, Washington. I don't know where Clarkston is geographically in the state of Washington. You should tell me in the chat just because I'm curious. Geography is one of the things I am the worst at of anything in life. I don't like there are things that people should definitely know where they are located in the world and I won't. And I'm a I'm a pretty smart person. I know a lot of things, but geography for whatever reason eludes me, does not stick in my head, all of that. So, um, yeah, but Clarkston, I feel probably small. Who knows? Maybe it's not. Maybe I should know where Clarkston is. Um, well, so if you guys have any questions for me, uh, drop them in the chat and I will start answering them as they come in or I can wait and kind of let them pile up a little bit. We got somebody from Nashville here. That's awesome. Um, I wanted to talk to you all about something that I imagine most of you can kind of understand and also possibly agree with. And that is coming back to games that you haven't played in a while. And it's not even like sometimes I play a game and then I cool on it and I don't like it as much. And so I don't play it for a while and then I come back to it. And sometimes I like it more again, sometimes I don't, but I'm kind of more talking about games that you played and you really liked, but then for whatever reason, you just didn't play them for a while after that. And I have an example of that because it was one of my most played games the year that it came out. And then I just stopped playing it for no reason at all. And that is Codenames Duet. So when code names came out, regular code names, not this one, when regular code names came out in 2015, is that right? I think it was 2015. Uh, I and my group went bananas for it and we played it a lot. And I really burned myself out on regular code names. I got to the point where I did not want to play it anymore at all. Just not because the game was bad, but because I was just tired of it. Um, so then when I heard that they were making a two player version of it, I was one of those people that was like, oh, come on, really? Like this has gotta be a cash grab. You know, they're just trying to capitalize on the success of the original. And then they came out with all the themed versions on all this other stuff. And I was like, no, I was like, I don't want, I'm not interested. And then somebody was like, hey, Codenames Duet is really good. Like really, really good. And I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. This, is by far 
the best version of code names. And I'm not saying other versions of code names are bad, but this one is the best one. It is so interesting. It is two player, although you could technically play it in groups and just have them be on teams. Um, but I think it shines best when you play it two players. The cooperative nature of this version of Codenames is so fun. Uh, my friend Kathy and I just broke it out like a week ago and played it again. And it really has a lot of delightful moments in it. And I think one of my favorite things to do, which Kathy just was laughing at me about, at the end of our game, when we were getting down to just the final last couple of spies that we needed to find, I do something that Kathy says that she doesn't think to do, and I, but I imagine maybe other people do. I don't know. Um, when I'm trying to connect a word to two different clues that are probably not that connected, I do this thing where I try and look at all of the other pairings and see if there would have been something better for my partner to say. Does that make sense? So like, even if this thing doesn't make a lot of sense that I'm putting together in my head, are there other things that would have made more sense if the words were different? And I, so I go through all of the possibilities and I suss it out. And then sometimes that gets me to the right answer. And when we played a week ago, it did. And it was just the most delightful moment. I have no idea if I'm explaining that well, but I just wanted to say that I hadn't played this in a long time. And I'm so glad I got brought, uh, bleh. I'm so glad I brought it back to the table and I kind of want to play it again right away. Uh, my husband and I actually played this one quite a bit when it came out. Um, and so yeah, Codenames Duet, super good. And I think it's a good lesson for me that I do tend to get caught up in the cult of the new and all of the hot games coming out. Um, and that's not to say that I don't like playing older games. I just tend to kind of forget about things for a while. And I think it is important to occasionally come back to these older games. It's like this one is what? When did it come out? Two years ago, probably? Is there a year on the box? Not on the outside. I could open it up and look, but... Um, like this is not that old and yet it felt like it had been forever since I'd played it. So I, uh, I'm glad I brought it back to the table and I would love to hear from you all in the chat if there are any games that you didn't play for a while that you came back to and kind of rediscovered your love of them. I want to know what those games are because if I haven't played them, I feel like I should give them a shot. So I'm going to go back up into the chat, um, and see what questions we have so far. Uh, oh, okay, so I got clarification about where Clarkston is, and that is in eastern Washington, pretty much the same city as Lewiston, Idaho. Oh, okay. I've never been to Idaho. I've been to Washington State. I've been to Seattle, but I've never been to Idaho before. Um, Fred says, just said hi to Gizmo from Crystal. Uh, awesome, like Gizmo, like Netter's bird? Gizmo? Because I love Gizmo. I have met Gizmo. Gizmo is lovely. So if that's the Gizmo you're talking about, or if you're talking about a pet of yours, oh, I get it. Never mind. You have a dog named Gizmo. I forgot I was wearing this shirt. <laughs> I was so confused for a minute. I'm like, you know Gizmo the bird? No. Yes, please, everyone. This is very important. Tell, oh, wrong side of my shirt. <laughs> Tell your dog that I said hi, please. Very important. Um, <laughs> I just got this shirt in the mail a couple days ago, and I literally forgot that this is the one I put on. Uh, Gary asks, have you put up your Christmas tree yet? And I have not. I actually wanted to put it up a week or two ago, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So I'm going to be doing that in the near future. Uh, David asks, have you played Mega City Oceana? I've just ordered it on sale as it was on my Christmas list. It intrigued me as a mix of dexterity and board game. I have not played Mega City Oceana yet, and I really want to. I really, really, really want to play it. I like the stuff that Hub Games is putting out, um, and that one really looks interesting. So it's definitely on my want to try, want to play, probably want to buy list, um, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. And this is actually a good point for me personally. This time of year is the toughest for me board game buying wise because Essen just happened. And then Board Game Geek Con, while there isn't really stuff necessarily releasing there, like I think stuff from Essen that came over to the States starts getting hyped up more. So there are a lot of games that come out that I am like, ooh, yeah, I want that, I want that, I want that. But my birthday and Christmas are both in December. So if I buy myself a bunch of things right now, then I potentially remove things from my wish list for my birthday and for Christmas, which 
I obviously don't expect gifts from everybody. Oh, sorry, Sterling just heard something and is barking and that's gonna continue for a minute. And I can't mute myself because there's no co-host here to take over. Uh, apologies for Sterling in the background. I think uh, we may have actually just had a package delivered so he's gonna bark at the door until he thinks no one is there. Sorry. Um, and yeah, so um, so yeah, if I buy myself a bunch of games right now, then like if my husband or my parents or my friends wanted to get me board games, <laughs> he's awful, I'm so sorry, um, then it's harder for them to do that because the things that I want right now, I'd be buying for myself. So um, I tend to struggle this time of year, especially, oh, Black Friday sales. There's all these amazing sales on board games that happen at Black Friday. And I'm torn. I don't want to buy myself stuff this time of year. Like, that just seems silly. So I tend to not, and then I kind of regret it because I won't get the games I wanted always as gifts, obviously. Um, and I do put things on my wish lists on like Amazon or Board Game Geek. Um, but you know, just because I put it on a wish list doesn't guarantee somebody's gonna get it for me. So I don't know, does anybody else struggle with this? It's tough for me. I don't know what to do usually. Um, Bruce says, they say to set up your Christmas tree after December 1st. I don't know who they is, but I think people should set up their Christmas tree whenever they want. I admittedly, I get, I, I used to be, okay, when I was growing up, the radio stations in Kansas City, Missouri, where I lived, always switched over to Christmas music on Thanksgiving Day. That was the day that Christmas music started playing and they played Christmas music from Thanksgiving Day all the way to Christmas. And I loved that. Like when we were driving to my grandma's house for Thanksgiving, we'd get to listen to Christmas music and that was awesome. I am now not as bothered by Christmas stuff happening in places before Thanksgiving. It doesn't really bother me. I will say though, before Halloween, <laughs> That's where it starts to get a little bit like, oh, that's too much. It's too soon. And I'm still not going to hate on anybody. If you want to put up your Christmas tree in August in your house, do whatever you want. But like when I go into a store looking for Halloween decorations and there's a big display of Christmas decor, it's just kind of ugh, like <laughs> I don't I don't mind anyone enjoying the holiday season for as long as they want. I love December. I love Christmas. I love my birthday. I love all of the things that happen in December. Oh, especially eggnog. I know you can technically make eggnog any time of year, but I only partake in eggnog in December and not always with alcohol in case that isn't clear. Like eggnog is great by itself too. <laughs> It's really good. Um, but yeah, December is just so lovely. Um, and if people want to extend that happiness and cheer to a longer time period, then you know what? I think they should. So put up your Christmas tree whenever you want. You have my permission. If one of your family members complains, you tell them Crystal said it was okay. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see. Uh, then Gary says, in my region, it's after December 6th, but I have seen some already. I wonder why the 6th. Is there a specific reason for that date that I'm not aware of? Maybe. Uh, Tom Ripley asks, have you met a celebrity? Uh, I have met Tess Gerritsen, very good author. I've actually been really lucky and gotten to meet um, a few celebrities um, over the past few years. Um, uh, so I did um, a VIP meet and greet uh, back when Mythbusters was still on tour. So I got to meet Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman, and both of them were really lovely. Um, in fact, I will actually tell you all a quick story. So I, the, I, I was obsessed with Myth, Mythbusters from their first season on. Um, if I had been mechanically or engineering minded, I would have wanted to move to California and work for Mythbusters. Uh, Mythbusters started... Uh, I believe in 2003, which is the year that I both graduated high school and started college. Um, so I was kind of like a perfect age, you know, really wanting to soak up information. And that show was great for that. Um, when they did their tour here a few years ago before Mythbusters ended, I went and saw their show, like the, I got a regular ticket and went and saw their show in San Diego. Then I went and saw it again when it was here in Las Vegas and I did the VIP experience. When I was at their show in San Diego, they do a question and answer session, kind of like this, um, and they split it up. So Adam does uh, a session where he sits in on a stool on one side of the stage and kind of directs or gets questions from that side of the audience. And Adam sits on a stool on the other side of the stage at a separate time and generally gets questions from the other side of the audience. So they kind of mix it up in that way. And we were pretty near the front 
And we were on the side where Jamie was doing his, I think I said Adam both times. Did I say Adam both times? Maybe, whatever. Jamie was the one doing the Q&A on our side of the auditorium. And so um, when he was asking for questions from the audience, I raised my hand and he called on me and I asked him um, if you could go back in time 10 years, which I believe at this point was, it was 10 years since Mythbusters had started. I said, if you could go back in time 10 years and tell yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? And Jamie Heineman, I believe is a very thoughtful and intelligent person. And he paused and he said, that's a really good question. And of course, just that alone made me just, oh, I was so happy that I impressed Jamie Heineman in any way. Um, and then he said, you know what? I think I would have told myself to have more fun. And I, it was just such a delightful moment to hear that because he, I think has kind of, he got this reputation as being this like stodgy, you know, grumpy guy, um, as opposed to Adam's lighter personality. Um, but yeah, he said he would have told himself to have more fun. So then in Vegas, when I got to meet Adam and Jamie, um, I got to, you know, say hi, shake their hands. I gave Adam a hug. Jamie's not really a hugger. Or no, maybe it's the other way around. Whatever. Um, and I told Jamie, I said, hey, I have to thank you because I actually asked a question at your Q&A at the San Diego show. And when I posted what you said and what you, to me and everything on my Facebook page, all of my friends were super impressed and thought it was really cool. So you made me look pretty cool in front of my friends. And I wanted to thank you for that. And he, um, he kind of took my hand and shook it again. And he was like, thank you so much for coming, not just to this show, but to both of our, to two of our shows. He was like, we really, really appreciate that. He was just so kind like really like he appreciated the fact that he recognized that I was coming to their show multiple times and he oh just the nicest person um sorry that got long but I really love that story um I think you know celebrities especially people who are on television you kind of get wrapped up in the personality you see on tv and you don't get to know the real person and I think both Adam and Jamie are really lovely people based on my interactions with them um other celebrities that I've gotten to meet I've gotten to meet a lot of uh Star Trek actors and actresses because I go to the Star Trek convention here in Las Vegas uh, and I've done some uh, photo ops which I still have the photos in here don't I hold on I've shown a couple I sh showed one of these recently um when, uh sadly when Aaron Eisenberg passed away I pulled out the photo I had with him um so but um Max Grodenchik or no no this is um well so yeah Aaron Eisenberg's the one on the left so there's, but you, these are stars that you guys probably haven't heard of, and obviously they're in costume at this point, so it's, you wouldn't even recognize them if you had seen them in other stuff. So there's me with Nog and Rom from Star Trek. And then I also got to meet, oh gosh, this one is dusty. Let's see if I can, um, Catherine Janeway herself, Kate Mulgrew, who a lot of you probably know from lots of different things, including like Orange is the New Black or Star Trek Voyager. Um... And then my other two that I have currently up here in this office, let's see. Oh, Anthony Rapp, who also in Star Trek Discovery and uh, famous for originating the role of Roger in Rent on Broadway. Um, I have, oh, also was also in the movie Adventures in Babysitting, which is one of my favorite movies from the 80s. And so I always love to point that out about Anthony Rapp, that he was, he was the the son's best friend in that movie, if anyone saw it. And yeah. And then let's see, what else do I have? Oh, uh, Wilson Cruz, who um, was in My So-Called Life back in the day and is also in Star Trek Discovery. And Mary Wiseman, who um, I had, <laughs> I got to meet and interact with a bunch and she actually signed this for me after the fact. And it was delightful that she and I did such a silly photo together. Um, but she's in Baskets, which is on, I think, FX, um, and then also Star Trek Discovery. Um, I'm trying to think of other celebrities that I've met that weren't Star Trek related. Um, I feel like there are others. Um, I did get to meet Trey Parker um, from South Park at Gen Con. Um, South Park is problematic, um, for sure. Um, but he was very kind um, when I got to meet him. Um, so... Uh, oh, Halo, did you just come in? So you missed my Kate Mulgrew photo. Hold on, I'll, I'll hold it up again. Ooh, let's see. There it is. And of course I wore my There's Coffee in That Nebula shirt um, because I had to. And she complimented my shirt, which made me really happy. Um, 
And I'm sure that they see stuff like that all the time. But when people are kind about references to their own work, um, you know, that's just the best. Um, other celebrities that I've met. I know that there's got to be more. I've been very lucky. Um, if I think of something, I'll let you know. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to scroll back up because I know that I told a long story and probably missed some stuff here. Um, let's see here. Okay, Glenn asks, can you use the same word cards of code names with the duet? I guess you can, but I just want to make sure before I get it. Yes. So it comes with its own word cards, but you can use the word cards from any of the code names versions, I think, in any of the others pretty much without much. And I actually, if I remember correctly, this box I think has... Oh, maybe it just has the duet stuff in it. I want to. I thought I'd combined some of my versions, but maybe not. So, but yeah, it looks. They look the same. Um, you know, double sided. Um, but yeah, you could use regular code names words, but you just you would you need to buy duet for these cards specifically um, because they're they're double sided and they show different stuff on each side because. Um, one person, the, the, a thing might be a bystander on your side of the card, but it might actually not be a bystander on the other person's side of the card. So the way you track wrong guesses is a little bit different as well. Um, but yeah, Codenames Duet is honestly just delightful. Uh, Gary asks, who let the dogs out? Oh no, uh, it says my video is buffering. That is a bummer. Um... Let's see, I apologize for that. It looks like it might be fixing itself. Um, sorry if that gets bad. Please let me know if it, if it did that for a really long time or if it's still doing it. Um, on my end, it looks like it might be okay now, but hard to tell. Um, okay, scrolling back up. Yeah, Gary says, who let the dogs out? And uh, well, maybe let herself out of the room right before I started the stream. I wanted her to say hi to you all. Um, but she left me. <laughs> so, um, have I played Terraforming Mars or Viticulture? If so, do you recommend? It's funny because those are two games that people really, really love, and I have not played either one of them. Um, they're both on my list of things that I definitely would be willing to play, and it just hasn't happened. And I think that probably happens to all of us sometimes. Um, so I have heard very good things about both. I think of the two, if I had to guess, I think I would like Viticulture more than Terraforming Mars, but who knows, because I haven't played either. So uh, if people in the chat have played both of those games and want to give Lucy a recommendation, that would be really lovely. Um, let's see. Uh, Kabuki Kid says, Michael Pollard just died, was a celebrity friend of the family when I was a kid. He was on a Star Trek episode, so that adds in the Crystal Connection. There are a lot of people that were guest stars on Star Trek of the various series that most people don't even realize. Like, um, and sometimes some of them were even recurring characters. Um, and those are some of the best roles are when it's an actor that is known for other things and they show up in Star Trek, especially if they're in heavy makeup so it doesn't even look like them. Kabuki Kid says, maybe they make lactose-free eggnog. Um, oh, I guess Bruce was asking about lactose and far, as far as eggnog goes. I must have missed something further up. Um, I, uh, I will admit, I, I drink the regular eggnog, not the lactose-free kind, but I'm sure somebody is making that. Or you might be able to make it yourself, honestly. There's recipes online for really good eggnog. I know Alton Brown has a really famous eggnog recipe, but I don't think that one's lactose-free. <laughs> Um, oh, so Gary says they have a regional holiday called Sinterklaas on December 6th. It's more like a kids festival where they get candy and presents. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, Sinterklaas. I'm trying to think what that translates to. I mean, Klaus is probably Claus, like Santa Claus. Is it Santa Claus just in a single word? I don't know. Um, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom real quick and make sure that the video is okay. Yes. Okay. It looks like it is doing okay now. Uh, do, 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 scrolling back up. Uh, David says, I completely agree on not buying things for yourself in December. Saw Mega City for 27 euro on sale and had to pick it up since it's usually at least 37. We'll save it for Christmas though. Oh, that's cool. Um, okay, so we got, got past the Kate Mulgrew stuff. David says, I'm re I'm rewatching Voyager at the moment. It's definitely the most relaxed and fun Star Trek series. That's actually a pretty good point. I would say that that's probably true. There are 
um, there are more bad episodes of Voyager than there are of, say, Deep Space Nine. Um, but overall, Voyager is delightful and the story is great and I really love it. And I just rewatched all of Voyager a year ago um, or so. Um, and it was honestly worth rewatching all of because I had missed a bunch of episodes when I was younger. Um, so it was really, really good to see it finally, like in its entirety. Um, <laughs> Kabuki Kid says, a gape mouth face is a standard photo pose. Yeah, so um, when Mary Wiseman and I did the photo together, um, I had actually asked a question uh, and talked to her at a panel earlier in the day. They did a Star Trek Discovery panel, and I actually got to go up to the mic and speak to the panelists, including her specifically. And I thanked her because I told her she was the first uh, female character in Star Trek that I could truly see myself in. Um, and she was really, really sweet about it. And when I walked up to her at her photo op, usually they just like shuffle you in and you take a picture and then you walk away. And it's kind of like, hi, bye, and that's it. Well, when she saw me at the front of the line, she got really excited and she held her arms out and she gave me a really big hug. And um, we talked for a minute. And then I said, um, I said for the photo, I was like, is it okay if we just act like the most excited about something ever? And she was like, oh, definitely. And she went all out on it. I, come on, I gotta show you all again. It's the best, like, this is the type of photo op that I'm literally never, never gonna forget. Like, it's just the best. Who, like, she literally was, I was just like, we wanna be so excited about everything. And she did it. 11 out of 10, easily. Um, and when I walked away from her and that interaction, I fully cried because I was so happy. <laughs> I'm an emotional person. It was a really lovely moment. It was great. Um, all, oh, so, uh, Halo was asking about Kate Mulgrew. Is she nice in person? All of the Star Trek actors and actresses that I have interacted with have been delightful. Um, the only one that I have... I have not directly interacted with, but I've seen direct interactions with who I believe is not always that kind is William Shatner. He's, and I, I'm, whether it's justified or not, I know that he gets a lot of attention all the time. And I imagine that that's very grating and that's hard to deal with. Um, but he tends to, his interactions with people tend to not be quite as pleasant as some of the other people that I've seen. So uh that is what it is um let's see here um dr odd earlier asked who are you crystal who am i indeed um i introduced myself at the beginning of the stream but obviously if you popped in later um you might not know so my name is crystal pisano i am a member of the dice tower team i host dice tower tonight with eric summerer uh, and i've also made some other appearances here and there um, i did show up on the dice tower podcast um, at least once um, and my podcast board game blitz is part of the dice tower network um, i also make other videos here and there um, on the dice tower channel i've done some live streaming in the past although i haven't done any in a while um, my live streaming setup kind of got, um, <laughs> thrown out the window when we renovated things and I need to figure out a new place to stream because my current office here, while it's great for this, is not so good for gameplay streaming. So I'd like to figure that out again. But, um, the live marathon, which is happening right here on the Dice Tower channel tomorrow, um, is uh, gonna be really fun. I'm not gonna be there, but I do have a video that's gonna show up at some point during that marathon. So you all will get to see me for a little bit in there. Um, and I think that that will be pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Oh, even the actor who played Tom Paris was in Next Generation as a different ensign. I don't think I knew that actually. So that's a cool fact. Um, we had some people talking about viticulture and terraforming Mars. Um, oh, the brand Silk has a lactose-free eggnog. Good to know. Um, David Williams says, my Star Trek story visited the set of Voyager. Jerry Ryan is sprayed on costume with fuzzy bathroom slippers on the set. Uh, Robert Duncan McNeil was directing her and Robert Picardo in the Switch episode. Very cool. I would have loved to have been on set for some of that stuff. Um, Mark Streed, who I'm sure some of you know of and have seen content from here on the Dice Tower, he does all the Kickstarter previews, um, did some work um, that 
related to all of that stuff back in the 90s and actually got to be on set for a lot of those Star Trek shows. And the stories that he's told me are delightful. If you ever want to hear really cool behind the scenes Star Trek stories, talk to Mark Street. He's got the deets. It's good stuff. Um, let's see here. David Williams says, ran into LeVar Burton working on another show. He completed me shoes. He completed... I'm not sure what that was intended to mean. I'm sorry, David. I know it was a typo, but I can't figure out what that was supposed to mean. But that's really cool that you got to meet LeVar Burton. Um, David says, I even like the bad episodes of Star Trek. Something about the whole thing is so endearing. I mean, I'm kind of the same way. Uh, My husband is watching Deep Space Nine for the first time. And uh, one little ship just popped up into our list, um, which is the one where the Rubicon, one of their runabouts, um, gets shrunk down. So it's like literally this big. And then hijinks ensue. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's a good episode of Star Trek, but I love it. It's really enjoyable. Very funny and silly. And I just, yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, Dr. Odd popped in again and said, what's the delay? So I'm imagining you mean um, my delay in answering your questions. So I'm just going through the list as they come in. Um, So I'm going back and answering questions as I see them, um, just so I always have questions to answer, basically. And also, uh, there is a delay between the YouTube stream and what you all are seeing. Um, So... Um, there is a little bit of delay there too. It's not completely real time. I don't think it's super long, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, something like that. Um, oh, somebody said, uh, Kabuki Kid says they have a good Shatner story from a friend that worked with him. Yeah, I, I've heard a few stories over the years. Um, <laughs> uh, David Williams says John Delancey is a bit of a jerk. Okay, well, I've never met him. He's very prolific as far as Star Trek stuff is concerned. Um, Delay is probably like 15 to 20 seconds more than likely, but she's reading questions at her own pace. Yeah, that's true. I am. I'm going through the questions as I get to them. Um, Let's see. The Switch episode where the doctor was in Seven's body was also cool. Totally. And I swear this is a board game stream, not a Star Trek stream, but I love that you all love Star Trek as much as I do. It makes me super happy. So, um... Thank you for telling me about the lactose-free eggnog, Kathleen. Thank you for telling me about Kathleen's comment. Crystal, I would not have noticed if you did not. Yay! Well, I'm glad I pointed it out then. I do do read all of the messages, and I try and skip over the ones that obviously don't need to be said, but it is nice to, you know, let you all know that I am seeing what you're writing, and I appreciate it. Oh, okay, so David says he complimented his shoes. Dave LeVar Burton complimented your shoes. That's a fun story. I mean, really, I like it. Uh, Antoinette says, I met LeVar a few weeks ago at Destination Star Trek in Birmingham. Birmingham, right? That's how you say it? It's not Birmingham, which is what Americans want to say. Birmingham. No, that's not right either. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm butchering a very simple word. And he said, I smelled nice. I wonder if LeVar Burton gives a unique compliment to every person he meets. You know what? I don't know. Obviously, I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to say it that it is because it sounds like something that he would do. Like, I bet when LeVar Burton meets somebody, he compliments them in a cool or unique way. Um, and he's just spreading joy throughout the whole universe. So that's what I'm going to say is definitely happening going forward. Um, Dr. Odd, thanks, Kabuki. Must be hard reading all these comments. Eh, it's not hard. Um, but I, it's tough because I just want to make sure that I get to everything and I'm also putting a lot of thought and consideration into my responses. I don't want to give you all just two second replies. Um, so that's why I do go into tangents like the Mythbusters story from earlier, um, because I think it's interesting and I like telling stories. It's fun. Uh, Kabuki Kid says, any new, any good new movies, TV shows, books recently? Uh, yes, Definitely. So I, before I say any names of things, I will say I'm not spoiling anything at all. So don't worry if you're watching this and a thing I name is something you haven't seen yet. Um, so <laughs> uh, The Mandalorian, I've watched the first three episodes already um, and it is really cool. I am enjoying it quite a bit. I'm very curious to know where things are going, especially after what happened in episode three. Um, so I... Uh, yeah, I'm interested in that. And then my my new favorite thing that's 
brand new is His Dark Materials on HBO. Well, it's made by BBC in conjunction with HBO. So the His Dark Materials series of books by Philip Pullman is one of my favorite book series of all time. And I am one of the people that actually liked the Golden Compass movie that came out back in 2005, I wanna say. A lot of people hated that movie. I really liked it, um, but this new show is way better than the Golden Compass movie was. Um, even if you have not read the His Dark Materials books, if you have an HBO subscription, I highly recommend the new TV show. It's really good so far. I think we're only three episodes in, maybe four. Um, it is really good. And then the other TV thing that I have to mention right now, of course, is um, The Good Place, which is in its final season. Um, they just aired their full finale and they're going to take a like five week hiatus and then they come back in January and then the series finale is on January 30th and that's going to be a 90 minute episode. 90 minutes of a network TV show, people. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that it's going to be over, but I really love what they're doing with the story for this final season. So... Ah, so happy that they're wrapping it up the way that they want to, and it's going to be great. Um, and now we are only two months away from Star Trek Picard. Oh my gosh, I just can't even. I'm so excited for Star Trek Picard. Uh, and it's literally, it's less than two months now because it's January 23rd. Um, it is the day before the Dice Tower cruise departs. So I'm going to be in Florida already. Uh, you better believe I am going to watch the premiere episode on my phone if I have to. I'm not waiting a whole week until I get back to Nevada <laughs> to watch it. I am so excited for Star Trek Picard. It's going to be great. And if you all don't have a CBS All Access subscription yet, you better prepare to get one because you're going to need it. And it's going to be great. So um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's any movies I've seen recently. I haven't really been to the movies in a while. Um, so not really. I did re-watch uh, Tron and Tron Legacy when Disney Plus launched because I love those movies. And it uh, made me very happy and then also very sad because I really, really, really wanted a sequel to Tron Legacy. And Disney decided to scrap the sequel um, because it didn't. the movie didn't do as well as they had hoped. And that really bums me out. So you know what? I think all of you should go stream Tron Legacy. And if enough people stream it, then maybe they'll change their mind many years later. <laughs> That's probably wishful thinking on my part, but oh, I loved what they set up at the end of Tron Legacy and it would have made for a really interesting next movie. And oh, those movies are just great. So good. And Tron really holds up considering it was made in 1982. Like the digital effects and computer animated things that are in that movie, like obviously they pale in comparison to what people can do today. But if you look at it and realize this was made in 1982, it is so impressive what they were able to do. And it's such a good story. I love it so much. Are there any other Tron fans in the chat? Please tell me if you are also a fan of Tron. I mean, technically it came out before I was even born. I was born in 84, but I still love it. So let me know if you also like Tron. Um, <laughs> Halo says that they are punching out a board game and watching the live stream, Zen moments. I'm glad that I can provide a little Zen for you today. Uh, I don't think most people describe me or my personality as Zen very often, <laughs> more, hurried and frantic and uh, a little bit excitable, <laughs> but I'm happy that my stream is not um, too much of any of that. Um, Pamela asks, do you have a favorite Star Trek board game? I've not had good luck with them. Well, that is probably because most Star Trek board games are not that great. Um, my two favorites, <laughs> which are gonna be on opposite ends of a spectrum. Star Trek Ascendancy, I think, is the best heavy strategic Star Trek game. Um, oh, with a second place to Star Trek Fleet Captains. I've only technically played that one once, though, so it's hard for me to give a solid recommendation there, but that is a solid game for sure. So Star Trek Ascendancy is my favorite, but it has issues. Fleet Captains, also good, but I've only played it once. Then my other favorite Star Trek board game, which is the ridiculous silly one, 
is the Star Trek The Next Generation Klingon Challenge VHS board game, <laughs> which came out a long time ago. It has a VHS tape. You're literally playing while a Klingon is on your TV screen yelling at you. Um, it is ridiculous, like any of the old VHS or DVD games tended to be. Um, so it is not a... I wouldn't say it's a good game. I love it though. Um, and if you like nostalgic, silly, fun games, um, there's, and you like Star Trek, it's pretty fun. So, uh, and I own a copy. So if you're ever at a con where I'm at, let me know and I will bring it and we will put up a tablet because the video is on YouTube. So we don't have to use an actual VHS tape and we can play the Klingon challenge board game together because it is delightful. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dr. Odd asks, uh, did I meet Will Wheaton? I have never met Will Wheaton, actually. He used to come to the Star Trek convention a long time ago. Um, and then I, I'm, this, everything I'm about to say, I'm not certain of, I've not verified, but I believe the company that runs the Star Trek convention, Creation Entertainment and Will had some kind of a dispute or falling out or something happened. And so he no longer comes to that convention specifically, the one here in Vegas. He does go to smaller Star Trek conventions, but I don't, I've never been to any others other than the one here in Vegas. And the ones I've been to, he was not at. So I haven't ever had the chance to meet him, but um, I would like to at some point. <clears throat> Kathleen says, I'm going to cry when the good place ends. Oh, I think all of us that our fans of The Good Place are going to cry when it ends because whatever they're going to do, it's not going to be a, a nothing moment. It's going to be something big and emotional, I'm sure. Halo says, when is Star Trek Discovery coming out? January, right? I don't think so. No, I think it's going to be later in 2020. I don't actually think they've announced a date yet. Um, let me look. Um, I But I, I think it's going to be later because I don't think that they're going to air... Picard and Discovery simultaneously. I think what CBS is going to do, and which is probably smart of them, is uh, there's five total new Star Trek shows. One of them is going to be on Nickelodeon, but I think the other four are all going to be on Star Trek, on Star Trek, on CBS All Access. And I think if they're smart, what they'll do is they'll kind of have those running all year concurrently to one another, at least for the most part. So that way, it makes sense for Star Trek fans to keep their CBS All Access membership all year long. Um, I'm, I'm not saying people will be happy about that, but I think that's probably what they're going to do. But they haven't announced, like, the Section 31 show. I don't even know if it's in production yet. Um, Lower Decks, though, is coming this year for sure. So let's see. Star Trek Discovery Season 3. I don't see. Let me go to the Wikipedia. So production is expected to end next month. So they haven't start, finished filming season three yet. Um, I release, let's see if it, it just says 2020. So yeah, they haven't set a date yet. So based on the fact that they haven't set a date yet and Picard starts in January, my guess would be Discovery is not coming back until the spring or maybe even the summer, but who knows? Um, I would like it to be sooner, obviously, um, but yeah. Um, let's see. Bruce asks, have you seen Will Wheaton's gaming channel? I don't think so, if this is something new. Um, I used to watch his show Tabletop that he did through Geek and Sundry a long time ago, um, but if he has something new, I am unaware of that, so I'd be curious if that is the case. Um, David says, we're getting Picard on Amazon Prime here in the UK. Very excited. Yeah, I heard that some people were confused because they saw that Picard was on Amazon Prime and thought that was the case here in the States. But Amazon only owns the rights to the international release of Picard. So it's all very confusing. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is it Maicon? Maicon? Rodriguez? You said hello, and so I wanted to say hello to you. <laughs> Hi! Um, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, Lucy, any solo games you recommend? I'm new to gaming, so don't have many people to play with. I already have Onirim, Friday, and Robinson Crusoe. That's a really good question. I, for the most part, have not played a ton of solo games. Um, 
I will say I recently tried the solo mode of Tussie Mussy, the new uh, button shy game designed by Elizabeth Hargrave. And that's a smaller solo game, obviously not a big one, um, but that was really fun. I liked that a lot. Oh, you know what? I So I think it might be out of print, but there is a print and play version of the one that I'm about to name. So you might be able to print it out on your own and make your own copy. And I can't remember the name of it. So that's why I'm scrolling through. Oh, okay, Black Sonata is a pure solo game that I, it's a deduction game and it was really fun. Um, so I actually think that is really neat. Um, if you like escape rooms, most of the escape room in a box style board games you can play solo. Um, so if you really like solving puzzles and escape room type things, I think picking up some of the escape room games is probably a cool idea for solo play. Um, but like I said, I haven't played the solo modes of a lot of different board games. Um, so I, it's hard for me to say definitively um, what the best ones are. Hopefully some people in the chat uh, dropped some things in here for you. Um, as I scroll down, I'll be able to see that, obviously. Um, Bruce asks, what is TOS? Uh, that's the original series. So the Star Trek that aired in the 50s and 60s, or just 60s. Did it start in the 60s? I don't remember the date, around then. <laughs> Um, Gary asks, have you seen that there is a Tron roller coaster in Hong Kong Disneyland? Yes, I have. I'm very jealous. I want to go to Hong Kong just to ride it. Like it's, ah, uh, like it's the perfect roller coaster with the light cycles and the neon and everything. And, oh, I'm so jealous that they get that. Also, it seems so odd to me that like Tron Legacy, they, Disney considered it to be kind of a failure. And then after all of that, they were like, oh, let's build a Tron roller coaster. <laughs> Like, why would you tease people like me with making Neutron things, but not a new movie? I hate it, but I also love it. And I want to go ride that ride for sure. I love roller coasters a lot. And a Tron one is right up my alley. So uh, Kabuki Kid says, I dig Tron and I'm old enough to have seen it in the theater when I was a kid. Home computers were sort of a new thing at the time. So it was extra cool. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that was really neat. Um, David says, I really enjoyed the Tron sequel. I went to see it on Christmas Day when I was living in Thailand. I haven't seen the original Tron in many years. Well, if you get Disney Plus, it's right there. So, um, Bruce also recommends Friday, which you, Lucy, you said you already own. So it's good to get some backup on that one. Um, oh, Kabuki Kid says Nemo's War, probably king for solo games. Uh, I've never played that one. So, um... video you can use on YouTube. Um, let's see here. Uh, Antoinette says that she met Will Wheaton in London two years ago. He didn't say that she smelled nice, but they had a nice chat about board games. Well, that's really neat. Um, yeah, I know Wheaton is a gamer and a Star Trek actor. Like, that's, I, I really would like to meet him. <laughs> we have a lot of interests in common. Um, David Williams says, favorite Star Trek games, Fleet Captains, and just for fun, Star Trek Panic. I, I have played Star Trek Panic, and if other people like that game, I think that that is wonderful. I hated it. I hated it so much. There were, I, and it, what's funny is it's been long enough now that I don't remember the specific reasons, but there were a couple of different cards or situations that popped up that basically made things feel completely impossible. And I want a cooperative game to be difficult, but there were some things in that game that were so frustrating that I just could not even abide them. So I'm really glad that other people like that game. I do not. And I think I still have it in my collection. I haven't gotten rid of it, which is silly because I'm never playing it again. <laughs> um, uh, good solo game, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective or Hostage Negotiator. I have heard good things about Hostage Negotiator. I've never played Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, but I did play the game that was based on Sherlock Holmes, which was Mythos Tales. Um, so yeah, I think those are probably cool solo games for sure. Oh, oh, best solo game. Lucy, I hope you're still here. Legacy of Dragonhold. If you like story based games and kind of like just going on an adventure, oh my gosh, I played Legacy of Dragonhold by myself. And what I did is I created two characters and I controlled both of them. It's really easy to do and it's so much fun. I really hope you're still here. Get Legacy of Dragonhold. It is delightful and you will not regret it. I just, yeah, 
it was wonderful. You just sit there and you get to read through the story parts of the book and make decisions and do things. And oh, it's so good. And I can't believe I didn't think of that immediately. So good. Um, let's see here. Oh, David says for about Star Trek Panic that it's fun having the cardboard ship onto which you attach damage tokens and there really is a feeling of panic. I mean, I was definitely panicking, but <laughs> I will admit the 3D components of the game are pretty neat. Um, Disney's Land, Disneyland's People Mover had an indoor section which simulated being on a Tron bike. However, I have a very low opinion of the movie. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, uh, that's cool, though, that they themed the People Mover like that. Um, uh, solo war game that Kabuki Kid suggests a D-Day at Omaha Beach. Um, oh, Carrie says the Tron roller coaster is actually in Shanghai, not Hong Kong. Uh, but good news, they are also building it in Florida. Wait, what? What? Hold on. It's coming to Florida. Uh, I'm literally looking it up right now. I can't even. <gasps> How did I not know about this? There was an article from May saying exciting progress is being made at the Tron attraction coming to Magic Kingdom. <gasps> oh my gosh, when is it opening? When is it opening? Uh, Tron is set to open in time for the 50th anniversary in 2021. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's so exciting. <laughs> okay, well, you just made my day. I'm very, very excited now. Um, and it's so silly. It's just a roller coaster themed like a movie I like, but yeah, that's amazing. I'm very excited. Um, let's see here. Seventh Continent can be done solo too. Um, I've heard really good things about Seventh Continent being played solo. I played it with four people and did not have a great experience. Although since then I have learned that we were probably playing a very important rule wrong. So all of this time I've been hating Seventh Continent and it might've been for the wrong reasons. So that's an interesting thing. Um, that is definitely not the first time that's happened to me. <laughs> um, also, I should read rule books. I might let my friends teach me games and no fault to them. I get rules wrong all the time too, but I feel like I should do a better job of ensuring that I'm playing the games I'm playing right before I make a, an opinion about them, if that makes sense. So I'm not faulting anybody for teaching me a game wrong, but I think if I'm going to make an opinion about a game, I should be a little bit more knowledgeable. So just a self-awareness thing for me. Um... Kabuki Kid says, too bad we will probably never see a Legacy of Dragon Holt sequel. That's true, although I would not be surprised if we end up seeing similar games um, from the designer Nikki Valens, um, obviously not through Fantasy Flight, but through other channels, um, I hope, because I loved it. Um, oh good, Lucy was still here and heard my recommendation. Perfect. Um, Grevo, Grevo, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, says, I think many of the hybrid board games like Chronicles of Crime or Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth are good. Do you think they are good for solo gaming? Uh, I would say definitely yes. I've only played Chronicles of Crime with two or more people, but I think it would be great solo. Um, I haven't played Lord of the Rings Journey in, Journeys in Middle Earth. I know that that's the one that's kind of like Mansions of Madness, right? Um, and obviously Mansions of Madness, I think would be, I don't think that one would be as good solo, but maybe Lord of the Rings would be. Not certain, because I haven't played it. Um, yep, you all made my day. That's definitely true. <laughs> Glad I didn't book a trip to Hong Kong. Yes, I'm not um, not gonna go to Hong Kong, especially because it's in Shanghai and also because it's coming to Florida, so I don't have to go overseas at all. Um, let's see here. Uh, Halo asks, if I have an Italian background, my last name sounds Italian. Uh, well, I married into my last name, so I have no genealogical connection to it, although it is an Italian name. Um, no, my background is uh, pretty diverse, um, but I do, my grandmother um, was a Farragher, which is a clan from the Isle of Man. So I come at least partially from that part of the country, which explains my very, very pale skin. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's kind of the part of my heritage that I know the most about. Um, but yeah, not Italian at all. My, my husband is uh, part Italian and part Greek. Um, so the name is just from marriage, not from genealogy. Um, what's interesting is my maiden name, um, I'm not connected to at all either because my father was adopted when he was a kid. So his name that he grew up with, um, that I, I grew up with is not actually, re I'm related to my genealogy either. So I've never had a last name that I had any genealogical connection to. 
something I've never actually thought of, but is true. So um, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> and the Farragher thing I mentioned earlier, that's my biological grandmother on my dad's side. So um, let's see here. Nikki is a solid writer. Yeah, definitely. Love, love Nikki's stuff. Um, Battle Cry says, Tron would make a better streaming show now than a movie nowadays. You know, there Disney did an animated Tron show after Tron Legacy. Um, and it, I can't remember what the, it was Tron something and it's on Disney Plus and I've never watched it, but I'm going to. I've heard it's really good. So I'm uh, actually excited to check that out now that I have easy access to it. All right, folks. Well, it looks like I have run out of questions. I've got about five minutes left. If you all have anything else you want to ask me about Tron or board games or Star Trek, I had some notes, um, but you all did a really good job of asking me lots of things. Um, if you want, I can mention some games that I've played recently and you can, if you want my thoughts on them, I can tell you about them. Um, so I got to play Roll Estate, which is a print and play game uh, designed by Chris Michaud, moderator Chris from Flip the Table that's on Print and Play Arcade. I got to play Silver and Gold for the first time. I played Eco's First Continent. I actually played that one twice. Uh, I finally got to play a full game of Reavers of Midgard, which I was really excited about. Um, yeah, so if any of those um, strike you as something that you want to hear about in this last couple of minutes, uh, let me know and I can share my thoughts with you um, about any of those games. Uh, I also, not too long, like a month or two ago, a friend brought um, Millborn to Game Night, um, which I hadn't played since I was a kid. And I will say that that game does not hold up. <laughs> it was really not enjoyable. And again, that's not to say anyone who likes it has the wrong opinion or anything else like that. And I liked it when I was a kid. But for me, personally, currently, not fun anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Silver and Gold. Uh amazing. I literally ordered it as soon as we were done playing because I want to take it to my family's house for Thanksgiving. Silver and Gold is really, really simple. And really, it just, it's one of those games that feels super satisfying when you're completing the cards. And also the idea of writing on cards is just very unique. But that's not even like I like a good gimmick. But the gimmick isn't why I like the game at all. In this case, the game is just really solid. Phil Walker Harding's stuff tends to scratch the right part of my brain generally. So I'm not surprised that I like it, but yeah, silver and gold, super good. Um, Halo wants to know about Ecos. So I've played it twice. The first time we played it with the full player count of six players. And then the second time we played it with three. Um, I will say that six players was too many. The downtime was way, way, way longer. And the game took far longer than it should have. And we were really like, my game group tends to play pretty slowly in general, but we were moving along, I think pretty quickly. And it still took a very, very long time with six players. Cause even though it's like, it has that bingo style mechanism where you're drawing a thing and then everybody does a thing. When people trigger the cards in front of them via that bingo mechanism, sometimes that card will give you more resources, which can trigger another card, which can trigger another card. And if multiple people get cards triggered in the same draw, then you're just sitting there waiting. Okay, you're doing that and that and that and that and that. And it just takes too long. With three players, it was definitely better. And I did enjoy it. But this game has a lot of similarities to Rise of Augustus, which also has that same bingo-like mechanism where you're putting cubes on cards in front of you. I like Rise of Augustus more because of its simplicity. And that's not to say that Ecos is that complex. It really isn't. But it's just, there's a little bit more going on than I think I enjoy for that style of game. So I liked it. I would play it again, um, but I'm not going to be adding it to my collection. I think it was enjoyable for sure. And I know the main team at the Dice Tower all really liked it. I'm not certain what player counts they played it at. It may have soured my opinion a little bit playing it with six players the first time. I personally would not go above four players for that game ever. Um, which is kind of funny because I saw that Matthew Jude did a video review of it. And he said that he thinks it's best at its highest player counts. And that was really surprising to me. I don't know... Um, I, I don't know if he played it at his, its higher player counts or if he just thinks it'll be better at its higher player counts. Um, but when I saw that, I was like, what, really? Like, it was miserable with six people to just sit there and wait for everybody to do their stuff every single turn. And it took so long. Like, that game is light enough that it shouldn't take as long as it took us to play it ever. So, um, let's see here. 
Uh, Gary says, have you ever considered doing a DNA test on my heritage to find out more about your relatives? Um, I've actually done a DNA test in the past on 23andMe. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm a mix of a lot of different things is basically what I found out. Um, let's see. Have I ever played any Vital Lacerda games like Lisboa? Um, I have not played Lisboa and I don't think I've played anything by Vital Lacerda. Um, but I'm not certain. I might, if, if it's, if I have, it's maybe only one of his games. Um, oh, Mailborn, the main flaw is the go card. Sometimes you're just stuck waiting for one. Yeah, that, and also I had a speed limit on me at one point and all of my cards were above the speed limit. So there was just nothing I could play. Um, what are some games that I enjoy that are heavy? Recently played Food Chain Magnate and loved it. Was by, was your first Splatter game. Now I'm getting more intrigued by heavy games. I don't tend to gravitate towards a lot of super heavy games. Um, yeah, it's just not really my thing. I guess I, there are some heavier thematic games that I like, but as far as like the Euros are concerned, the heavier ones tend to not be the ones that I gravitate toward. Um, one of my favorite games is Runebound, which is a heavier thematic game, or at least it's a longer thematic game. Um, but it's not super, I don't know, it's not, it's pretty approachable, I would say, but not light by any means. Um, but yeah, most of my, I think my butter zone is kind of medium weight Euros or thematic games of kind of any kind or lighter games in general. But that's kind of because I play games on weeknights um, a lot of the time. And so I don't have a lot of the brain power to focus on something heavy and deep. If I get to play games on a weekend, I will play something heavier usually. So um, let's see. Uh, we're almost done here. Um, David says, I love Phil Walker Harding's work. I need to grab the Baron Park expansion and look into silver and gold. Yeah, I, um, Baron Park is super fun. I haven't played with the expansion, um, but silver and gold, I honestly would highly recommend. Um, and I'm very excited to put silver and gold into my quiver. Um, Solo Play Gamer says, have you played Clank Legacy yet? It's so good. I haven't, and I really want to. Um, it's hard to get Legacy games played because of all of the other gaming that I have to get done. So, um, but it's on my list for sure. Um, Halo says, I see your animation has three dogs. I thought you had two. Maybe I'm mistaken. I have three, actually. Um, I, actually, I can just, here, let's see. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I will just show you all my home screen of my phone. Um, and hopefully that'll be clear. There's the three of them. Uh, Sterling's the one up top, and then Lana in the middle, and then, oop, and then maybe down at the bottom. Um, so that is my three those are my three puppos and everybody says they look exactly the same. They don't when you see them in person, but I know they're small, white and fluffy. So they kind of do <laughs> if you don't know them. Um, but yeah, they are um, adorable and I love them very much. They are, let's see, uh, Lana and Sterling are both eight years old and maybe is seven years old. Um, yeah, that's right. I was like doing the math in my head. So they're all like middle-aged and adorable and love to cuddle. And now that the weather's gotten colder here in Las Vegas, especially in the mornings, um, they're always all cuddled up with me in bed and it's hard to get out of bed when they're all keeping me warm. So um, let's see here. Uh, Gravo or Grivo again, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, I need to say that you people from the Dice Tower are very important for many thousand gamers from all over the world. And I want to thank you for that. Sorry for my spelling since I'm from Norway. You do not need to apologize for your spelling at all. And thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I love making content about board games and I love getting to interact with the board game community. Um, so I, it is, I, I obviously I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for the other members of the Dice Tower, but it is sincerely my pleasure to get to interact with you all here. Um, yeah, they, I just, I love it so much. So uh, one last thing, Gary Jans, Jan, Jans? I'm, I should just say Gary and not mispronounce things. Uh, you just mentioned Reavers of Midgard. That is kind of heavy. True. That is definitely true. And oh gosh, Lana just came into my office. Lana, do you want to come over here and say hi? Can you even get over here with all the cords? Oh gosh, come here, come here. I know your leg is hurt. You wanna come up on mama's lap? Here, you, you can say hi to the chat before we leave. Okay, I'm gonna pick you up. Oh gosh, this could turn into a disaster. And we're gonna turn you around. Come here. Oh gosh, you're big. Okay. Here, you all can say hi to Lana. She just wandered into my office. She had surgery a couple of months ago on her back leg. So she's still recovering from that. 
but yeah, now you all can see one of the dogs. And she doesn't usually get up on my lap because she's bigger. Yeah. You're so sweet. And you just got groomed this week, so you're very pretty. You're very pretty. You don't know to look at the camera, I know. <gasps> yeah, there it is. Okay, I'll put you down. Oh, gosh. Okay, careful, 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 careful. There you go. You're okay. <laughs> All right, so there, you guys got to say hi to a doggo. Uh, I am going to wrap up this stream. I'm running a little bit late. Um... But I am so happy that you all joined me. Please, if you could, before you leave, um, hit the little thumbs up button below the video for me. Um, and um, yeah, that helps with YouTube's analytics. And if you enjoyed this video, please tell your friends. I do this live stream uh, every month, the final Sunday of the month at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, and I believe it's 4.30 p.m. GMT. So uh, I would love to have you all join me next month. Let's see, when will that be? Near the end of December. Let's look at what that date is going to be. So that'll be the 29th of December will be my next um, Q&A. But then uh, Eric Summer and I do uh, Dice Tower tonight every other Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Although this coming Wednesday, it is going to be earlier than that time-wise. It is going to be, I believe, at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And it's going to be a shorter than usual stream because I'm flying to Kansas City to visit my family for Thanksgiving. So I hope you all can join us for Dice Tower tonight and I hope you all can join me again for a future Q&A. I've loved getting to speak with you all today. I hope you have a wonderful day and rest of your weekend. And if you're in America, a great Thanksgiving. And I will talk to you all again soon. Have fun gaming, everyone. Bye.